We're now going to look at projectile motion. Let's start with our assumptions. We are assuming that we are working with a point particle. So there's no spatial extent to this particle. So there's no possibility for the particle to ro rotate or to vibrate. Uh, also, number two goes along with this point particle uh, approximation in that even if we were to consider air in the uh, presence of this object, the point particle has no cross-sectional area to allow air resistance to have an effect. So point particle, no air resistance, and the acceleration on our projectile is negative 9.8 meters per second only, right? So nothing else but that. Well, in terms of how you need to think about projectile motion, you want to think of projectile motion as two one-dimensional motions occurring at the same time. So what do I mean by that? Well, you want to think of the vertical part of projectile motion. So our velocity in the y direction. So we can see that we have the initial velocity here of our projectile is 300. And by the way, that is the speed of the object as it comes directly out of whatever is shooting it. So in, if it were a cannon, let's say this is the barrel of the cannon. So the cannonball is coming out of the cannon and it leaves the cannon in this case with a speed of 300 meters per second. We know from our vectors chapter then that the initial velocity in the y direction is 300 sine 35. So our 35 degree angle is the angle that it's being shot at. So even though I have the V initial in the Y direction drawn over there, my tip to tail vector addition would have it over here. So that's why it is sine, of course. So we get the velocity in the Y direction is 172.7. And if you look at what is going on, regardless of the velocity that it has in the X direction, the 245.7, the Y motion is occurring as if that X motion isn't there at all. So it's kind of oblivious. The Y motion is oblivious to the fact that it's drifting to the right at 245.7 the whole time. So once the X velocity is known, it doesn't change in our projectile motion problems. The Y direction velocity is governed by negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and that calculation is made the same exact way that we made it in our one-dimensional motion chapters chapter. So hopefully you can see that it's just the combination of the two happening simultaneously. It's vertical cir circular motion just drifting uh, to the right. As far as your problem-solving techniques are concerned, you definitely, if you can, want to right away calculate the initial velocity in the y direction and the initial velocity in the x direction. So we never really problem solve with the actual velocity of the object. Okay, what else? If you were asked to calculate uh, the speed that the object has when it hits the ground, this is important because we are again talking about the instant before impact. So please do not say zero because, of course, it comes to rest after it impacts the ground and embeds. But if they say what speed does it have when it hits the ground, they mean that instant before impact. And if you look at the notes here, we can see that by symmetry, we get the same exact overall speed and the same exact speed in the y direction and in the x direction based on symmetry. So if gravity had a distance h, so let me show that, had a distance h to work with total, so to the top, right? Then it has distance h to work on it when it comes down, so it'll have the same speed when it comes down, and of course the v initial in the y direction equals zero will be one of the key features that we use to problem solve when we want to know anything about the projectile on its top position. Well, you definitely do your analysis by separating your page into X direction and Y direction and doing all of your calculations separately, just like we do with any two-dimensional motion. 
there is never any acceleration in the x direction. So the only equation that really gives us any use is this equation here in the x direction. Basically, the speed in the x direction equals the distance in the x direction that it travels divided by the time. So our x direction constant acceleration equations boil down to really just that one equation. You can see our third equation just tells us that the speed is not changing. Now in the y direction, we're left with two equations. We have our y equation, so y final equals y initial. I just represented it in the delta y version here. Uh, equals v initial times time, v initial in the y direction times time, plus one half a t squared. The acceleration is always negative 9.8, so we have delta y equals v initial in the y direction times time, minus 4.9 t squared. This equation will be very, very useful anytime we want to know how long the projectile is in the air, because at that point, delta y is zero. It starts at zero, it ends at zero. So keep that in mind for using that equation to calculate how long it's been in the air. Well, if we want to know how long it takes to get halfway up, we can plug in v final in the y direction equals zero. So we have a third equation here that's quite useful for projectile motion. v final in the y direction equals v initial in the y direction plus acceleration times time. The acceleration is always negative 9.8. So these are the three equations we basically are going to problem solve with for all projectile motion. Of course, not all projectile motion has to have a delta y of zero. So oftentimes they'll pick an intermediate spot, for example, like right here, to calculate what is going on. So if I can calculate the final velocity in the y direction, the velocity in the x direction never changes, I would do a tip to tail you know, vector addition to get the actual speed. Uh, so you have to see what information you're given in the problems, but as we practice doing these types of problems, I think you will become very comfortable with them. Most often students, after a little bit of practice, enjoy solving the projectile motion problems. So let me erase my additional markings here to clean this page up. Please make sure you get down all the notations that you need, and we will get some practice with projectile motion problems.